Over the decade multiple aircraft have scored a kill or two on F-22 Raptor in Red Flags or Northern Edge, never was maneuverability a contributing factor. The Suhoi Su-27 NATO reporting name flanker, is a Soviet-origin twin-engine supermaneuverable fighter aircraft designed by Suhoi. The Su-27 had the Soviet Union's first operational fly-by-wire control system, based on the Suhoi OKB's experience with the T-4 bomber project. Thanks to its relatively low wing loading and powerful basic flight controls, the Su-27, as well as the other members of the Flanker family, Su-30 and Su-35 and the fifth-generation Su-57 Felon, is an exceptionally agile aircraft, controllable even at very low speeds and high angle of attack. Do the Su-27, Su-30, Su-35, and Su-57 have better maneuverability than the US F-22 Raptor? Not even close, says Abharup Sengupta, an aviation expert, on Quora. People simply forget a simple but the most important factor, this is how combat-loaded F-22 looks like. There's no external pylons, weapons, targeting or ECM pod, unlike Su-30 or Su-35 which looks. All that external carriage creates huge drag which has a significant impact on maneuverability. For instance, the Eurofighter Typhoon has its top speed reduced from Mach 2 to Mach 1.6 when carrying 6 AAMs. There's a reason behind every design choice because everything comes at a price. The Su-30 MK for instance has canards, not to increase maneuverability, as often mistaken, but to compensate the extra weight from BARS radar which is heavier than usual. Sengupta continues. Contrary to popular notion Su-30 or Su-35 and Su-57 don't have 3D thrust vectoring, flankers thrust vectoring actually moves in one plane, up or down, but are canted outward to the engine axis. The canting allows movement in all rotational axis by vectoring each engine nozzle differently. That's great for low speed high alpha performance in the air shows, but once engaged the aircraft bleeds a lot of airspeeds. For comparison, look at F-22's thrust vectoring. The F-22's 2D thrust vectoring TV nozzles are parallel and therefore, much more efficient than canted nozzles in Su-30 or Su-35. What this means is when TV is in use, the flanker's canted TV will bleed more energy than Raptor, giving Raptors better sustained turn rates. The substantially larger vertical stabilizers provide more than sufficient yaw control. The F-22 has demonstrated Mach 1.8 supercruise with a combat load, the Su-57 program doesn't even have a goal anywhere near that. Sure, there might be areas where Su-57 comes near F-22 but there are many areas where the F-22 likely has significant advantages such as speed, acceleration, and sustained turn rate or vertical flight envelope to say the least. Never mind that raw kinematic performance plays a small role in real combat. It might be great for air shows but the fact is maneuverability takes the last spot in a list of things that are actually relevant in modern combat. Over the decade multiple aircraft have scored a kill or two on Raptor in Red Flags or Northern Edge, never was maneuverability a contributing factor.